the majority of tree pythons in captivity come from New Guinea. Now, New Guinea is a large island off the northern coast of Australia, and it is divided into two political parts. Uh, the eastern portion is called Papua and is under the control of New Guinea. And the western portion is called West Papua or Irian Jaya and is under the uh, control of Indonesia. Now, uh, Papua New Guinea is close to the export of fauna, so the majority of tree pythons in captivity have genetic ties uh, to West pa uh, Papua. Um, West Papua has about 162,000 square miles and is predominated by an east-west running mountain range that, including the portion in uh, Papua, is uh, almost a thousand miles long. Now, there are localities for uh, tree pythons and populations that range over the entirety of the mainland uh, and all of the island groups that surround uh, the periphery. Uh, the first one that I'm going to talk about is uh, famous because it is the uh, spot where the holotype or the first tree python was found and recorded. Uh, and it's called Aru. Aru is uh, an island group uh, off the southwestern coast of Irian Jaya with an area of about 3,300 square miles. Uh, it sits on the Australian New Guinea shelf uh, that at one point is thought to have been exposed during the last ice age. Uh, there are submerged geographic features uh, called the Aru Ridge, uh, the Maroki Rise, and the Wessel Rise that connect the Aru Archipelago with the southern portion of Irian Jaya uh, near Maroki and the Cape York Peninsula in northern Australia. Now, it's important because the phenotypes of the animals found in those locations are pretty similar, and there seems to be some uh, evidence to indicate that there's some genetic relatedness uh, between those populations. Uh, Maroki is a, a city on the southern coast of Irian Jaya, and it actually is situated in the midst of a very arid savanna that's uh, covered with eucalyptus and kangaroo. It's very similar to uh, portions of Australia. Uh, most of the uh, tree pythons that are attributed to Maroki uh, are actually coming from inland uh, near the southern foothills of the mountainous ridge that runs through the center of uh, New Guinea. Uh, one of those localities is called Tanamera, uh, and it is sort of near the um, the border of uh, Papua New Guinea and Irian Jaya uh, near the, the headwaters for the Fly River. Um, the next locality as we move uh, to the west is Tamika. It's a city uh, on the coast that uh, first yielded uh, tree pythons to the captive market when Freeport McMoran was in the process of uh, clear-cutting paths to gain access to uh, an area in which they've installed an enormous gold mine. Um, as, uh, as you move further to the west, uh, there's a, a locality that's recently become uh, very popular, Kofiao, or Kofau. Um, it's a small island uh, in the Rod Raja Ampat Ar uh, archipelago. It, uh, the island uh, itself of Kofau is about 52 square miles and it sits at the northern edge of the, uh, the Halmahera Sea. Uh, it's part of, or a smaller island, uh, in the Raja Ampat Archipelago, which translates uh, to the Four Kings. And the Four Kings for this purpose are uh, larger islands called Mizul, Salawati, Batanta, and Wego. Uh, this particular area is known for uh, absolutely extraordinary marine biodiversity uh, and tree pythons that um, either uh, postpone uh, a color shift or completely uh, forego a color shift and maintain a yellow coloration uh, into adulthood. Uh, as we move around the western edge of Irian Jaya, uh, we come to Sarong. Uh, which is located at the western edge of the Birdhead Peninsula. Uh, most of the animals from here are uh, typically a, a nice rich lime green with uh, blue markings down the back that uh, are uh, reflected by uh, the sort of neonate pattern. Uh, the darker markings on the neonate babies which are typically yellow. Um, 
end up turning blue and there's a you know they turn into nice adults that have got some blue markings and marbling down the back uh, the next locality uh, a fairly recent recent one uh, is called Manaquari. Um it's off the western tip of the uh, uh, the eastern tip of the Bird's Head Peninsula um, then there's uh, Biak which is an island off the northern coast of Irian Jaya uh, it's got a area of about 735 square miles uh, population of tree pythons that uh, for the most part are larger uh, than the the mainland animals and uh, are popular because they have a tendency to uh, maintain some rather unusual yellow blotching and uh, darker sort of vertebral markings uh, as adults. Uh, just to the south of Biak sits another island uh, called Yapen, which is slightly larger than Biak. Uh, it's about 879 square miles. Um, and for the most part is analogous uh, in terms of snake phenotypes to Biak. Uh, those same sort of yellow blotching and uh, larger snakes. Um, as we move back down into the mainland, we come to uh, Nibiri, which is at the neck of the Bird's Head Peninsula. Uh, then we move to the inland highlands uh, to localities like Wamina um, and Bocandini. And then we shift uh, to the northeast towards uh, Lara and uh, the Cyclops Mountains, and then ultimately to uh, Jayapura, uh, a coastal town of about 200,000 people that sits uh, very near the border with uh, Papua New Guinea and uh, and Irian Jaya. Now most of the mainland localities are fairly similar with the exception of uh, the Maroki or, or Tanamara type animals that come from the southern face of, uh, of the mountain range, but uh, the majority of the other ones, uh, Manaquari, Sarong, uh, Nibiri, uh, Lara, and the upland animals like Wamena tend to be uh, fairly similar. Some of the animals that occur at higher elevations tend to have some darker pigments, um, some sort of mite phasing, uh, as is popu popularly referred to in captivity. Um, but they're all, uh, you know, somewhat similar. So. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed uh, this little overview of some of the popular localities and uh, make sure and subscribe to the channel. We've got more on the way. Thanks for watching.